Okay, I'm going to try to get it right. Uh, it's Dobry, Dobry Utra. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I'm pronouncing terrible. My weird Portuguese accent. Um, Cartiela. <laughs> Is it good? Okay, yeah. nice. Now, then we are set. Um, I'm David Ferreira. I'm a front-end engineer and I'm really happy. Portugal won the Europe Cup for the first time on our lives and I was part of it, so I was celebrating. Here is my photo, last Sunday. Um, I'm from Portugal, but I, I live in the Netherlands, in this uh, beautiful city, Amsterdam. Um, I decided to live in Amsterdam because I wanted to move out of Portugal, getting new opportunities, trying to grow up professionally. Um, and I'm here basically to tell you a story. And the story is about my personal story, about how I started to develop. And there was a time where uh, some guy created a language called JavaScript. It was not always called JavaScript, but was initially released for this little friend called Netscape. Who, who knows who, what Netscape is? Damn, really nice times. <laughs> And I got really excited about uh, JavaScript in that time. Um, mostly because uh, Internet Explorer joined the party and introduced an implementation of JavaScript. Then I started to play around uh, using prompts and just alerts saying, hey, what's your name? And your name is this name. Uh, then I said, damn, I want to be a developer for, forever. And then I started to learn uh, development. And it was quite funny. However, this was not funny, because every browser was implementing their own way of JavaScript. And in that time, I was quite disappointed, so I had to work uh, really hard to, to make things work. But I was happy, like JavaScript was my life. I was really coding and start learning stuff. I was really happy. Uh, but then I start to think, uh, what are the changes uh, on the market? And then Android come out, smartphones was the new trend, and OK. I said, mm, let's give it a try to Java. So I started to learn a bit of Java and uh, Android development. I was happy again. Uh, I was working even harder to, to, to learn JavaScript and then to get my knowledge ready in Android. Uh, but then out of sudden, there was also another player in the market, which was iOS. I had to learn Objective-C. Uh, damn, Java, JavaScript, Objective-C, everyone is sticking together. I was like getting not so happy anymore, but still doing stuff. And then there was uh, Windows Mobile and Windows Phone and all the languages coming out. Apple announced Swift and I said, no, I cannot get up to date with all these things. I must find a way to be a proper developer and, and just focus in something. So let's go back to my native language. I said, at that point I said, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to learn proper language, uh, the, the one that I started with. So I said, I'm going back to JavaScript. Uh, here I am now, I'm a JavaScript engineer. I work for this uh, bank in the Netherlands, it's called the Rabobank. I'm not working directly for them, I'm just a consultant. And Rabobank has a small issue, which was building an app. And they were facing the question that most of the companies or corporations are facing. Should we go for native, hybrid, or whatever? That was the fight. Half of people and the corporation saying, let's go for native. And the other half saying, no, hybrid is good because you just have one code base. And it's, yeah, it's good. So there was this fight. And besides, all the banks were saying, we are going for native because of the performance issues that the hybrid apps might show. Uh, Rabobank says, no, we are going for hybrid. And that was the decision. And they started to develop their, their app. However, they got a bit stuck in time because the performance issues start to be bigger and bigger and grow every day, however, they end up with this. Uh, this might look beautiful, but there are some several performance issues that all the hybrid apps have. Because all we know about the lack of performance on the web views, uh, of course, it's nothing compared with native, and always mm -hmm. depends on the what purpose you want to, to have your app. But uh, incredible to say, all these apps that are shown on screen uh, are, you, are hybrid applications. And the one that I like more is the App Store. App Store, Apple App Store, they have their listings using uh, hybrid. So it's JavaScript and HTML. It's quite surprising because Apple created their own language 
to, to develop apps, but still. Uh, so if you ask me if I'm in favor of hybrid development, yes. If you ask me if I'm in favor of developing native apps, I say yes. It always depends on the case that you want to, to do. So even Apple, which is a big player on the market, they create a language to develop apps and they decided to go for native, it's up to them. But if they decide to create the hybrid apps, it's up to them. Like, it always depends on our problem, right? And who, who here is not facing problems at their work? Please raise their hand. Who, who is facing problems every day at their work? Not too many. <laughs> I was expecting more. And all the problems need to be fixed, right? Then we cannot fix... Um, we cannot fix... Um, we cannot... Uh, how do I say? Oh, no. Now I forgot the word. We cannot, cannot use uh, nails using a brush, right? The brush is used to paint, and the, the hammer is used to break things or just to, to, to use a nail. So the thing is, we have to choose the right tool for the, the, the problem we have to fix. And that's where Ionic came from. Ionic born uh, on an era that everyone was speculating or fighting, saying native is better, hybrid is better, what are the pros, what are the cons? And they just decided, okay, let's use some uh, nice JavaScript framework that are on the market, which is AngularJS, is on the market already for a while, is getting really mature, and Angular 2 is coming. Uh, they decided, okay, let's build um, a framework which every developer, every, every web, web developer can have a really nice interface for either uh, smartphones or for uh, web views, and they just start doing some stuff. And basically, what is Ionic? My first question is, who knows Ionic here? Who has ever worked with Ionic? OK, cool. <laughs> Ionic is basically a framework which joins several frameworks. AngularJS, Cordova, which probably most of you know. Uh, also, there are some implementations using PhoneGap. And of course, Node.js and NPM packages. Uh, so these are the two things that made uh, Ionic possible, as then we have all the automation on it. And there is also the Ionic CLI. Uh, it's a command line interface where I just, with few words, I can create um, uh, a nice application. I just say Ionic new and the application name. And then, by default, adds the platform for iPhone. So it has iPhone core of the components. I can add Android and Windows phone on it. So the idea about Ionic is I just build one application using HTML and JavaScript that runs on every device. And that's a good thing, but also a bad thing. The good thing is I can just have a, a quick prototype if I have a startup and I don't have enough resources. I want to build a product. I want to, to have a, a nice application on the market. But I, I cannot spend too much time hiring native developers to develop for each uh, platform. And that's a problem for a startup with limited resources, right? Uh, but then if we, if we build a, a simple HTML and JavaScript, because it ends up to be quite simple, uh, if we read the documentation, it's really simple to implement, then I can have an app. And who downloaded the app for the mobile optimized conference? Here. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sad. <laughs> I'm going to show it then, okay? Um, application? Sorry? Do you have application? Uh, yes. <laughs> and actually I developed the application for fun. And it was on Thursday I was thinking, what should I do to make the presentation nicer? With what app should I build? And I decided, okay, I'm going to build a, an app that shows the schedule for the mobile optimized and shows little components that we, we could use. So if you are going to Google Play Store, you search for mobile optimized in 2016, you can download it. And as you can see, it's a um, uh, hybrid app built with Ionic and Cordova. It has uh, some uh, native elements, like checking if the apps are installed. Uh, it's uh, showing the flashlight. And uh, the, the last one is using the accelerometer in order to change the background color of, uh, of a div. Uh, OK, let me show you. will not work because I'm presenting and when someone is presenting something it doesn't work. So can you all see? Okay. 
select some text. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here is my browser. I'm not developing on the phone at this moment because uh, that's the good thing about Ionic. I can develop the interface having real-time uh, feedback of it, so I just see what, what happens because if I change something now on the um, on, the edi on, on my editor, it will just refresh automatically. I don't even need to, to, to trigger the refresh button. And plus, if I have other devices connected to, to, to my laptop, such as Android or iPhone, it will refresh automatically. So on my desk, I can have different devices connected to laptop. Uh, could be wireless. And if I refresh something on the code editor, I save and it automatically updates on the different screens. So it's pretty cool to, to see the difference between the devices. And this app has some uh, CSS components. Uh, it has this uh, down bar. Um, I have a check apps um, button. However, sorry, this is not a mobile device. So on my app, I can check if it's a mobile device or not. So that's perfectly possible to build a website using Ionic. And that website will be exactly the same as the app. That's why we did in the, in the Rabobank. Uh, the home banking service, exactly the same code, works for the mobile app and if someone logins on the desktop for the, the home banking to make a transfer, for example, they will have exactly the same code running. That's how it works. Um, all these components um, are pretty simple. Like, I, I, built, I use the uh, component called cards and it just replicates these, uh, these cards that we can see here with all the limits. I'm not sure if you... Ah, it's visible. It's okay. Good. Um, and all of this was, was built using the Ionic framework. And that's, that's what, what it's about. Ionic is a, a framework that has a lot of uh, visual components already tested, already working for all the different devices. So if I want to prototype really fast, I use Ionic and it works everywhere. I don't know how, but it works. Th that's the good thing about Ionic. And if you are curious about the app, you can just download it and test it. Also checking the performance. One thing, one good point that I would like to share about the, the, the Ionic, they, they thought on every possible point of performance. There was an, there was an issue with the web views that was making the, the, the hybrid developer or web developers crazy, which was the 30, 300 milliseconds delay. Who is aware of what it is? <laughs> probably the ones that built uh, hybrid apps. Uh, it was really visible, for example, on the Google Maps. So if you have if you have the view of Google Maps and you wanted to scroll to, to, to move to a different part, it has this, it had this 300 milliseconds delay, which was making the, the view really chunky. And that was like, oh no, this is really bad user experience for, 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 for ourselves. And I only fixed that. So they, they have an, a property that you define to a component and you say, hey, don't wait for the don't, don't wait for the 300 milliseconds in order to show something. Just do it straight away. And that's what they done with the menu. So if I, if I open this menu, now here it seems quite fast, but uh, because it's the, the browser, but you can test on your phone, uh, it, won't, it won't break or it won't look chunky if you start to, to open and close the game. And the main reason because of that is uh, on, the, on, the, on the web views, previously, it was working like, so I, I had my phone and I have my menu, and what was happening was, always I was scrolling the menu to the front of the view, the GPU needed to, to, to render everything. So everything should be rendered, and the old mobile devices, the slow mobile devices, were doing a really bad job, because rendering all the entire screen, every single pixel that the menu was moving, was overkilling. And then with the recent web views, like the, the one that I Ionic implemented, they put it in two separate layers. So if we see the app like this, they put the menu like this distance. And then what they do is they just move the, the view to the screen. And that is interesting, that makes the, the app super fast. And the GPU only needs to know that, hey, move this div to there. And that's it. If you want to take it out, just take it out. On this case, it works differently because it moves also the, the current view to the right. Then what they do is they just slide two views. And they don't need to paint anything because everything is rendered already. That's a good point about Ionic and the way they build, the, they use the CSS for it. Okay, back to the presentation. Now I'm going to talk about some 
components that are available on Ionic. Uh, right now I'm not talking about uh, hardware uh, bridge or native bridge, I'm just talking about visual components that are purely CSS. And it has basically an header, a weather, um, uh, header, so I can have a, a really nice titles, etc. Uh, worth to mention that this is still totally customizable. So if your company is orange, uh, you can just change your CSS, your global CSS files to make the, the app looks like whatever you, you want to. And there are the button components, again you can change the colors. Because, uh, and who is using SAS instead of CSS? Nice. <laughs> who is using less? Boo! <laughs> no, both are nice. Uh, so Ionic uses SAS. Uh, if you want to customize, create your template, your theme with all the, all the colors that the brand you are working for, uh, they use, they just change the colors. So it's pretty really nice. Um, then there is this list component. Uh, looks like native. So if I focus this one, uh, looks like a, a native uh, view. However, it's not it's CSS. And the code that makes this is <coughs> just simple HTML tags that everyone knows how to, to write and simple classes that are available on the Ionic documentation. You can just go there and check whatever we need to, to, to add. And then all of, your log all of our logic is written with AngularJS. So if I want to add interactivity, or what happens when I click on a button, Angular will handle that. That's how it works. And then there is the list icons. So we have still the same list, uh, but now with icons. And you can have icons on the right, icons on the left. Um, who is a right developer here? How, how easy do you find to define the templates or the visuals? Sorry? No, how, how difficult is to create an, an interface that matches what the designer done? For example, usually the designers like to to add some something special on the interface, they they like to put their um, mark on it. So, but sometimes when convert to code, it can become quite complex. And mostly, I think on Android development, uh, the templates are in XML, right? So, if we had to add this specific uh, extra components on the view, probably it becomes more complex. With with Ionic, that's the great advantage. For a web developer, which is used to CSS, they just can place the elements on the HTML and place whatever they want with CSS. So there is this game that we don't have only HTML to position the elements, but then you can just uh, override the default styles using CSS. And that's how it's possible to, to have these different icons, these uh, list icons. And the good thing is, I don't even care about what is going to be the user or which user is going to to, to use the app. It could be iPhone, could be Android. It's just going to work because that's JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, which is going to be executed. That's the good thing. Next, there are the card components. So I just show uh, shown uh, how it looks like. Uh, it looks like these uh, Facebook cards uh, that are on Facebook, or just the Google cards as well. It's already there, so you can just use. Um, and then there is the action sheet and speedners. So the action sheet is that we have a bunch of options that we uh, can show to the user. So, uh, for example, if you have a, a grid with uh, images and then there is an action button, you can just pop out this one. It's already there. It, 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 uh, it works with JavaScript. So we can just take advantage of it. And there is much more. There is uh, the toggles, the, the tab view. So. Mostly, Ionic is about view, about what the user is going to, to, to see on the app. That's how it works. But now it's time, like, hey, wait a second. What if you want to take a photo? Or what if you want to get the user's location? Well, that could be a problem with Ionic uh, itself. Because Ionic is somewhere on an island, and then there are native devices on other islands. There is just water in the between, so there is no direct communication. Uh, so there is no way to, to from Ionic to say, hey, I want to have access to the geolocation, for example. And there is no way. You cannot do it with Ionic. 
And maybe now you are disappointed saying, what the hell are you saying? So you are coming here telling that a framework is only uh, to create a visual app? How do I add these important things that I need to have on an app, on a phone app? What's the point of using it? Well, that was the problem that was uh, created or raised as soon as the framework was released. Should be a way to have a communication in between. Of course, we cannot communicate with devices in JavaScript. You have to have native code. And that's what Cordova is doing. Uh, libraries, or, yeah, libraries like uh, Cordova and PhoneCap are just for that. They are just native uh, components which are exposing JavaScript APIs, so I can just call them. And for that, I'm using um, a library called ng Cordova, which uh, takes the Angular way of doing things. The, the, I like Angular, probably noticed already. Um, takes the Angular way of doing things to connect with this Cordova phone gap uh, APIs. And it's pretty simple because what I do is on my, on my JavaScript controller, what I do is I ask the, the specific APIs from Cordova and I get access to the native uh, devices. And we can install multiple plugins. NG Cordova has 70 plus plugins. So these plugins are plugins such as camera, touch ID, social networking, whatever, flashlight on the if you download the, the mobile optimized app, you can check the flashlight. I placed on the dashboard a flashlight button. It turns on the, the flashlight only if the flashlight is available on the phone. If it is not, it just don't, don't show the, doesn't show the, the, the button. And if we go to NG Card of documentation, it just shows the little icons uh, for the features. So I know that this feature in particular is available for Android, for iPhone, and for Windows Phone. Um, that, 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 that's how it works. So we just go to this uh, nice API. Uh, if we check the, the code, how it looks like. This is how my controller is going to look. So for the ones that are familiar with Angular way of doing things, I have a controller. I just inject the, the code of a uh, module, and I can do whatever I want on my controller. I can even mix up. Uh, some some components with each other. For example, what I can do is uh, turning the flashlight if I'm on a certain location. Just for fun. I'm on a certain location, uh, geofence, and then turn on the flashlight. So there are infinite things that we can do without having knowledge of the native development, like me. I don't have knowledge of it. That's why I, I chosen to, to work with uh, Ionic. And for the debugging, as I said already, uh, just change your, your code and it, it will change on different screens. These different screens could be uh, simulators on your laptop or, or your computer, or could be just devices plugged to the, to the computer. It will just uh, automatically update. And then there is another tool that I would like to share. It's an app called Ionic View. Ionic View is um, a service. I'm not sure if it's paid or free, uh, or free because I never use. I usually debug on my on computer. But what you, what you do is you create an account and you register your apps there, and then you don't need to have a development setup on the phone. So you can just if you want to test on your friend's device, for example, because you want to test something specific on that device, you just install it the uh, Ionic View, and you log in with your account and you have a list of all your applications that you built with Ionic, and you can just debug them and see how it works, so it's, it's pretty easy to, to, to do and it doesn't need to have any development or debugging option on the phone because the application will do it for me. Okay, that, that's about it. Uh, and now is the question, the, the, the time for questions. And I would like to know who has questions. When you explained to me, you told that uh, Ion creates multiple web views. So does it mean that uh, it uses multiple native web views? Uh, yeah, what I didn't want to mention is not Ionic is not creating different web views, it's still the same web view. What I wanted to say was that inside the web view is different are different layers. So we have one one web view with different layers and on Chrome for example you can check it on the let me show you. Yeah. 
actually I don't have it here. Um, or I do layers, yeah, I have it here. So on Chrome if you if you take a look like this, so you have a 3D view of the of the layers that are uh, that are built with HTML. So for example, this is a div and then this is another div, then probably this is a H1, so there are different layers. And in this app in particular, there are these, all these layers. And what happens when you move this one? As you can see, so it's just moving to the, to the right and put it in back, so it's not painting. So it's the same web view with different layers. Yeah, good. Any other questions?